Hello and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this uh, uh, session, on this live session with the GMAT Club. Uh, I am Susan Barishai, founder of SIA Admissions, and today we are, I'm really excited to be talking about uh, essays, essay writing. Uh, before we uh, get started, I just wanted to see who is here with us today live, uh, where are you connecting from? Um, I'm connecting from the East Coast in the, in the States and um, uh, would love to hear where you are uh, coming from. And then maybe you can just give us an a idea of what are some of the struggles that you are facing? Um, what are the least thing that you're interested in uh, in writing essays for MBA? Uh, so that would be really helpful uh, in seeing. So I'm looking at my other screen just to kind of see where people are connecting from uh, as you type those details in. Maybe you can just start, because I ask a lot of questions. Uh, maybe you can just start by telling us where you're connecting from. All right. Uh, oh, I see. OK, so we have Bangalore, India, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Mumbai, India. So welcome all. Thank you uh, so much for being here with us today. Um, I'm really excited to be discussing this topic, which is something that I am uh, really passionate about. Uh, so we have someone from Pakistan as well. So thank you and welcome. Uh, welcome to the session. So let's, uh, let me just uh, briefly uh, start by introducing myself. Um, so I am the founder of uh, SIA Admissions. It is a boutique consulting firm uh, focused uh, primarily on helping and coaching applicants, uh, ambitious applicants, tell their story to the admission teams. It really focuses on the narrative and the experiences that uh, candidates bring to the table to be able to showcase a unique uh, candidate profile. Uh, I come with a background in, uh, in uh, English and history from NYU and Yale and have uh, over seven years of admission coaching experience, uh, helping really ambitious candidates targeting top 20 business schools. Uh, over the years, I have um, had experience working in, uh, in uh, recruitment, in uh, private equity and hedge fund, which all of these combined um, add uh, nuanced perspectives as to how I look at a candidate's profile, not just from the perspective of what is being told, meaning a prose, but also um, what, uh, in, you know, what the future employers are looking at um, and how can uh, we present a story that is in line with who the applicant is, but also uh, marketable for those uh, employers that uh, will be looking to hire you hire them uh, post degree. Uh, I have a 94% placement rate, which means that 94% of the candidates I work with gain admission to at least one of their top choice institutions. So uh, with that introduction out of the way, let's talk a little bit about logistics uh, of this uh, presentation, what I'm hoping to cover. So uh, what I want to cover today is to first and foremost, start with what makes for a successful essay. Um, we always hear uh, what is a successful essay and how can one write a successful essay. And oftentimes we are really dependent on uh, looking at samples of how other people have presented themselves, uh, but not really looking at the elements of what makes for a successful essay. So I wanna make sure that we spend very brief a moment of time talking about that and seeing how that applies in a few um, different samples that I will be sharing later on. Uh, then I will be focusing on the three elements of a successful essay for uh, business school. And um, then of course, we're gonna, talking, we're gonna be talking about the essay, the written components uh, of the major pieces. Uh, of course, as you know, I'm sure uh, the application for each of the schools has many, many different parts. Uh, but my focus here is the main essays for MIT, uh, Booth, and Kellogg. Uh, after the presentation, there's going to be a Q&A. So if you are uh, interested in uh, presenting your question, if you have any questions about the presentation or about your writing process, 
how to present your story, please write it in the chat. And uh, after the presentation, I will be answering uh, questions uh, that you pose. So let's get started. So what makes for a successful essay? Whoops, I think I went too far. All right. So um, if you want, if you're interested in, in writing and really strengthening your communication style um, uh, or your communication, your written communication, I would encourage that you uh, pick up uh, uh, Francis Noel Thomas and, and uh, Mark Turner's Clear and Simple as the Truth. Um, it's an excellent essay on talking about uh, what it means to communicate um, effectively. Um, and then also uh, the uh, struck and white, uh, the element of style. Um, it really focuses a lot on how you present your ideas and, and how you use even punctuation to communicate um, in, your, in your written form. So I really uh, encourage you, whether this is uh, for now in the process of uh, writing your MBA essays, but also in the future as you become a leader uh, who is really uh, charged uh, at the end of the day to communicate cross-disciplinary uh, to cross-disciplinary teams and the, the, the effect of communication that it requires uh, both in written form in particular with these uh, books, uh, but also in uh, verbally as well. So uh, what makes for a successful essay? Let's talk a little bit about that. So uh, first and foremost, uh, you really want to place uh, the reader in a position to see the writer's point of view or experiences. Um, you are going to be using descriptive language that really speaks, that really brings together um, that image uh, that you have experienced uh, for the reader uh, to, to, on their mind's eye, if you will. Uh, so you are, you are really responsible to be able to show that to your uh, to the admission committee. So what I mean here is that you oftentimes hear that um, you know you have two consultants applying for business school. What makes them different? When a consultant or an investment banker or even non traditional candidate has the opportunity to really speak about their experiences from their truth, from their own um, you know exposures that they've had and be able to communicate that in an effective way, that differentiates the applicant, that differentiates one consultant from another. Uh, so this is a really important piece in your writing to be able to place the reader in your own experiences and uh, be able to showcase uh, uh, what exposures you've had that, that, that brings unique perspectives to your uh, to your candidacy and for you to bring new perspectives to the classroom. The other part um, is that sometimes I read essays that I feel very anxious reading them, meaning the language, the writing style, the communication style, all feels rushed and it feels um, uh, like there's a lot of anxiety. So I feel the writer's anxiety in reading an essay. And really it's an effective leader um, to communicate in this uh, in this particular way, in an essay format, you really need to present in a very calm and thoughtful way your uh, the things that you want to say. Um, this demonstrates that you are a leader that even under so much stress, which the MBA application is essentially a very stressful period, uh, you want to present yourself that you are calm and collected, and you do that in the way you choose language and the way you present your experiences. And then, of course, you want to include um, you want to include very simple, very concise uh, language and presentation. Uh, oftentimes, candidates um, think that they have to be creative writers. Uh, in the process of writing these essays, the schools are not really looking for that. They're looking for clear, concise communication for them to be able to understand what you bring to the table. Uh, so uh, I'll be coming back to these points uh, very frequently as we go through these uh, pieces, uh, as we go through the different segments, uh, but I really would love for you to internalize this, uh, these uh, segments of what makes, uh, or these elements that make for a successful essay, uh, because it does uh, reflect in the writing and the experience that the reader has in uh, looking at your candidacy and being able to see that you are someone who they would want to have in the classroom and it would add value to the cohort and to the class discussions. So 
with that, let's look at uh, an example. So uh, here, the, uh, these examples that you will be seeing have been heavily redacted. So if you see content that says ABC or uh, John Smith, um, these are not real names. And obviously these are not real companies. Um, the point is just to show you the clarity that, um, that I'm trying to get you to move towards as far as writing these essays. So, uh, so I'm just gonna read this um, out loud um, so you can hear what the author is trying to communicate as the language, as there's a, a few lines here uh, to, to cover. So my most memorable deal was when my team advised ABC, a top microfinance bank to acquire a small rural player. The deal seemed unlikely to go through because of mismatching business model. The rural bank provided, the, provided flexible open-ended loans vastly different from ABC's uh, proven fixed terms. When standard loan document due diligence failed to sufficiently justify the transaction, I suggested we visit and informally interview the rural bank's borrowers as their, uh, at their local businesses. Through this unconventional initiative, we learned that the open-ended lending model worked because the bank's intimate relationships with the local entrepreneurs. With this fresh perspective, ABC completed its acquisition, enabling the rural bank to provide more microloans to local SMEs. What's important here um, uh, to keep in mind is that the language is very clear. So as I mentioned, you have very clear, you were able to see what this person has gone through, what they have done. There was a very clear and concise language. So there's no excess words. Um, it is very polished uh, and very simple. There is no complexity in language because it's not needed. The reader, irrespective of their background, needs to be able to see um, what this person did. So even if you are not in M&A, um, even if you don't know um, anything about investments, you can imagine what this person is talking about with your mind's eye use, based on the language that they are, that they're using. Um, and it's not really uh, justifying the decision to acquire or not. It is just presenting facts. And that is a, a very strong way to, to, to communicate to the admission team. And the language is very calm. Um, there are no excess words, as I mentioned. Um, and uh, we are not really bogged down by detail. I oftentimes see essays where um, you go into the process in so much detail that loses the reader. The reader is it's left trying to understand what the person is communicating. Um, and that's not really effective, um, affecting writing. Sometimes you need to go into some details, but in most cases you can provide um, the, the process from, um, uh, from a more uh, micro level, uh, macro level, excuse me, uh, perspective that still gets the message across. So what are the pieces that you have to keep in mind as you write the MBA essays? Because what I just talked about is really more about effective writing. What, how do you communicate in an effective way using very concise language? Um, because every school, uh, well, with the exception of Booth, and, uh, well, with the exception of Booth rather, um, is going to have limited word words that it allows you to respond to a question. So you have to be concise. You have to provide enough details to be able to um, get the reader to really understand what you have contributed, what uh, experiences have you had. So let's look at um, the elements of successful essay. So um, uh, for the MBA, of course, the essay really needs to be anchored on a purpose. Uh, you are a purpose-driven professional and your essay and your communication has to be anchored in such. Uh, you also want to be um, providing anything that you are, you, are, uh, you are claiming. So the purpose itself, um, if you're including example, uh, if you're including sort of any kind of claims, any kind of statements, uh, you want to include one at least or more examples to illustrate how your purpose shows up in 
real life, how you engage with your community, how you work on projects, how you work with teams. Uh, you need to identify specific examples and specific actions you have taken. It is really important that um, you uh, speak to your actions, even if you're working on a team, especially if you're working on a team. Uh, you have to be able to say, of course, give credit to the team for the contributions that they've made to the project, but don't forget that you are being evaluated and not your team. So the admission team really cares a lot more about what you have done. And then, of course, you want to demonstrate that you have passion and care for what you're doing. Um, you are not showing up, um, you know, clocking in and clocking out, uh, but really you have, you have, you are purposeful. Um, you care about the things that you work um, on, whether that's a project at work or um, if it's, uh, you know, community involvement that you are, uh, that you are um, uh, contributing to. But most importantly, when, the talk, when we talk about goals, your passion has to come through. That's a really important thing, that if you are uh, dedicating your life, uh, at least you're presenting, that you're dedicating your life to this particular direction, it has, you have to have passion. So let's um, dive into MIT uh, as an example. So MIT only has one main essay, um, and it's not really an essay to begin with. It is actually a cover letter. And um, so the cover letter uh, prompt itself, it gives you an idea of what the school is looking for as far as um, what are they in the search for. They want someone who's passionate, who takes advantage of all the opportunities that MIT has to offer um, and knows what they, can, um, what they can bring to the community. And it's, of course, also looking to change the world in some way. So the, 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 your task, if you are targeting MIT Sloan, is to... Um, uh, take the what they're looking for into consideration as you submit a cover letter seeking a place in the MIT Sloan MBA program. Uh, this, of course, requires you to identify the opportunities at Sloan that you want to take advantage of. Given that you only have 300 words to respond to this essay, you are going to be a little bit more macro than micro, um, but you still need to identify how you're going to leverage or what are you going to leverage at MIT uh, to help you get to where you want to go. And you must, you absolutely must demonstrate passion for the thing that you are talking about, the value add that you bring to uh, the MIT community. You are at the end of the day seeking a seat and you are, this is your pitch to show MIT Sloan that you are bringing value to the um, to the community there. And then you must include one example that illustrates your value add to the classroom. You have to um, really spend um, at least 100 or maybe a little bit more, but at least 100 words or so talking about what you bring to the table, uh, because that at the end of the day uh, is your cover letter showing, showing what value you're bringing um, to the community. So let's look at an example. Again, this is an excerpt um, from an MIT um, applicant, and um, it is heavily redacted, again, um, aside from anyone, anything that is related to MIT Sloan that is, that is readily accessible online. And if we go, uh, so, so let's read the, the, the sample and then look at how this fits into what I, we just talked about. So, um, in addition to its unparalleled academics, Sloan is the ideal environment to strengthen my global reach through collaboration, hands-on experiences, and entrepreneurship. The China Lab, uh, as described by John Grant, is an invaluable faculty-backed resource to engage in China project. A China Lab opportunity provides exposure to the complexities of local, businesses, uh, local business, preparing me for a leadership position at ABC's local offices, working alongside our partners, CDF, a prerequisite for a C-suite role. Obviously, ABC and CDF are two, two different companies. Furthermore, I welcome participating in and contributing to the Infrastructure Finance Club, which, according to alumnus John Smith, uh, could benefit from strengthened ties between Sloan and project companies like ABC. 
So if we look at, um, you know, if we go back to a, a position um, that, uh, so get the reader into um, a position to see the, the writer's point of view. This is a lot of details that are included in here about how this person is going to um, leverage the opportunities and how this person sees the opportunities at MIT Sloan helping um, the applicant uh, get to where they want to go. It is very calm and thoughtful in the presentation. It gives a reason why, why, this is, why these opportunities are valuable. And it's very simple and concise language. There's no added words that don't need to be there. The essay is anchored on a purpose. All of these things have a goal. This person is looking for that global exposure, is looking to um, have an opportunity to understand China specifically and how businesses run because this person's company um, has offices there and is interested in C-suite role uh, eventually uh, and needs this, this kind of exposure. Um, has uh, provided um, uh, examples. So uh, the example here is going to be how this individual is able to um, uh, add value to the infrastructure finance club uh, from the, the experience and the company that they have had, uh, that they have worked uh, with and be able to, uh, you know, strengthen these ties that this individual, this alumnus has, has, uh, has talked about as far as uh, MIT Sloan uh, Club, uh, what MIT Sloan Club needs. Uh, so this individual is really taking the time to demonstrate not only what they're going to be contributing, but also what they're going to be, uh, uh, or rather what they're going to be taking, but also what they're going to be contributing to the community, all tying together to demonstrate a passion and a care about um, uh, the community and the development of everyone that is involved in this process. So this is a way that these pieces that I just mentioned uh, can be applied to an essay or a cover letter like MIT Sloan. So let's um, look at Booth. So Booth has two essays. We're going to talk about both of those. Um, the first essay is the goal essay. And anything that I say here can be used to any other uh, on any other essay, goal essay that the other schools have uh, and require of you. Um, Booth does not have a word limit. Uh, it has a word, a minimum word uh, requirement, and that's 250 words for each essay. The goals essay um, typically can be uh, answered in about 550, 600 words. And um, the second essay, which I'll talk about it in a, mo in a moment, um, it can be answered in about 500 words or so. So the goals essay is um, how, how will the Booth MBA help you achieve your immediate and long-term post-MBA career goal? Um, aside from looking at, of course, what makes for a strong essay, we want to focus a little bit more on what this essay specifically requires of you to do and how they all function together. So the first part is um, you want uh, to identify your goals specifically. So you have to identify the sector uh, and you have to identify um, uh, ideally what kind of role uh, you want to play in a particular sector. Uh, and the impact, ultimately, the ultimate impact that you want to have. So uh, you are going to do that by first anchoring the reader uh, in a narrative and an experience that you have had that influence or that fuels your desire to move in this direction. Uh, whether that is you are um, staying in the same sector or you are transitioning to a different sector. So you want to spend, um, really look at what experiences you've had to be able to communicate this. The um, other uh, piece that's really important here is that you um, uh, look at, uh, bring some detail, but not don't go into an entire story. So the, the, uh, the influential experience is going to be about two to three sentences, essentially. Uh, then you're going to uh, detail um, uh, specifics as to how Booth is going to help you get to your goals, so both your short-term and long-term, and then the why. The why is something that Booth um, particularly cares about, 
they want to know why everything that you mention is important in um, in your professional development, in your growth uh, uh, that you have identified as far as um, uh, the work that you've done. Uh, one thing I would say is for all these schools, you wanna make sure that you are not only relying on the content that's available on the website, but rather have conversations with students, alumni, and go dive deeper into the experiences that they have had to be able to really um, reflect a strong understanding of why why each of these schools um, brings value to you, whether you're applying to all three of them or any one of them. Uh, it is really important that you showcase that you understand why you are attending, why you have applied rather, um, uh, to be able to really persuade them that you know what your goals are and how they can be of value to you. So let's look at an example of uh, a sample of an excerpt um, of the um, uh, Booth essay. So uh, building on my economic background, Booth's customized curriculum will provide the specialized skill sets needed for a product leadership role. For example, price theory and machine learning will strengthen my ability to generate insights from data in business environments and identify the value versus price trade-offs of new products. Technology and competitive strategy will provide opportunities to enhance my decision-making skills by training me to solve highly complex business problems required of a CPO. Booth's unique curriculum offerings, uh, offering these specialized tech-related classes will greatly advance my product knowledge and B2B tech expertise. If we look at uh, the, the first pieces of what makes for a strong essay or a successful essay. This writer ha has done an excellent job at positioning the, positioning the, um, uh, the, the reader in understanding what is it that they're looking to do. This um, writer has used very descriptive language. They have um, presented, it in, presented their experience in a very calm, and thoughtful manner, um, uh, talking about very important details that matter to them. And it's very simple language, no complexity in here. They have also um, anchored on a purpose. So this person wants to be a chief uh, product officer. And um, the, um, it has provided an example, two examples specifically of uh, in this in this particular uh, excerpt, um, two specific examples of classes, and given the reason why, uh, showcasing what those uh, what those details are as it relates to uh, how Booth is going to be able to be a, uh, be of support to their professional development. So. Uh, there's a lot of layers to the writing. And if you look at it, it looks very, very simple. Um, but the, uh, but the, the content itself, it gives enough detail for both admission teams to say, yes, this individuals have given enough, uh, enough um, uh, concrete detail to showcase why we would be a value add to, um, uh, uh, to this person's professional growth. I'm sorry if you hear a dog um, uh, whining. She just came back from her walk. Uh, okay, so let's uh, talk about the Tell Me About Yourself essay. And this one, it uses um, a, a Booth uh, rather uh, understands that you bring in a lot of uh, professional experience through your resume and through, uh, and through your letters of recommendation, understands what contributions you've made. Um, to your community, uh, what they really want to know is get to know who you are. So tell them about yourself. Um, here, you're going to want to identify a theme that speaks to the character, who you are as an individual. Uh, but then what you need is also examples to illustrate what, how does this character, how does this person or who you are really shows up in uh, the real world. Ideally, you want two examples to be able to illustrate this. And then you are going to um, uh, conclude or um, sort of end uh, the, the, the essay by speaking about how this character is going to be valuable um, in the Booth community. Uh, because this is such a 
personal essay, personal response. Um, I have only pr uh, presented, I'm only presenting um, sort of the opening of um, one, uh, well, actually I'm presenting a, a bit of a detail in here, uh, but uh, it's really also important that you keep in mind that um, uh, you do require uh, some examples, uh, but heavily redacted again. So uh, given my passion for the arts and creating safe spaces, so this is who this person is. This person is interested in art and creating safe spaces. I became interested in amplifying the voices of garment artisans, often forgotten in the retail landscape. Since joining ABC, I have sustained my commitment to creating a space for diverse perspectives and communities. During my rotation program, I pitched a collection aimed at humanizing the women artisans making ABC's clothes. When the team adopted my idea for International Women's Day, I was proud we shared the artisan stories with customers, prompting them to reflect on the craft and welfare of the, uh, of the garment makers. This person ends up uh, continuing to, to speak about how uh, there have been additional ways that that this individual has created uh, communities to discuss um, uh, these diverse perspectives and also bring to the forefront a safe discussion around um, these artisan workers and how, uh, or these artisan crafts rather, um, and uh, how we as uh, consumers must think about them. Uh, the, if we go back to uh, the, again, the essay, uh, what makes for a good essay, the reader is positioned, knows where this person is coming from, knows uh, what this person's values are, and provides an example of how they've gone about exemplifying this value, how they've gone about uh, embodying this value in the way that they have uh, contributed, in particular here to their work. Calm and thoughtful presentation, very concise language. They have also anchored it on a purpose, the purpose being this creating the safe spaces and focusing on particularly the arts. So it, it can be a little bit more than one, you know, one thing um, that, you know, makes you who you are. And um, this person has provided more examples, but there's one in here in this, in this, um, uh, in this excerpt. And uh, uh, at the end, it concludes how this is going to be something that they look to continue in the future. The point here is if you look at this content, again, it's very um, detailed to what they bring to the table, detailed what they care about. And it's really, uh, it really speaks to the passion this person has that goes beyond what their responsibilities are at work that they're really contributing to this, uh, to this space. So let's go into um, the Kellogg applications and see how these pieces um, all fit together. So Kellogg, um, I'm going to focus on uh, two, uh, two essays here. And uh, the first is the leadership impact essay. And the prompt here is provide a recent example where you have demonstrated leadership and created value. What challenges did you face and what did you learn? Um, again, examples, you will see this as a constant. You want to include examples um, and uh, provide details that illustrate the leadership. Leadership is the anchor, right? Uh, that's where you are guiding the, um, the reader to understand um, what your leadership has been and also, of course, what the impact has been. And then you have to reflect on the challenges because your leadership is not tested until you have experienced some challenges. You want to show them how you think and how you learn uh, through that. And of course, the lessons learned. Um, it is, we never experience, we never know how to do things right the first time. Trial and error is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, part, of the, part of the game. But what's important is that by the end of that process, you have reflected on what that uh, lesson has been. What did you learn from that experience? And you want to be vulnerable enough to be able to show that, show that and share that with the, ad, with the admission committee in your essay. So let's look at an example here. And this is somewhat long, um, but uh, bear with me. Uh, these are too many process changes. I can't do this to my team. 
With these words, the online buying director shut down the conversation after hearing our process change proposal. In 2021, my team and I led ABC's most ambitious transformation initiative to date, delivering on the promise of omni-channel, an innovative approach enabling improved inventory visibility and seamless customer experience. My four-month project entailed streamlining the complex buy planning process of two siloed teams, ABC Stores and ABC Online. These two 100-person teams lived on separate coasts, managed the similar processes, and operated distinct tools. The person then goes on to talk about how they reconciled and how they how they were able to actually bring this omni-channel uh, process improvement uh, to fruition. And concludes by saying, I learned that successfully leading any major change requires incorporating the views of its stakeholders at every stage. Um, this person, um, this applicant has learned the lesson by getting pushback because they went in thinking that they're going to prepare the best approach and then realize that they're working with people and working with people requires continuous communication, continuous uh, and, and incorporating the voices of others. Uh, and uh, they did a fantastic job in the entirety of uh, this essay to be able to really communicate not only um, their leadership in this process, but also how they navigated the challenge that they were faced with. Um, and if we go back uh, to the uh, beginning, we are anchored uh, we are actually positioned rather uh, in this space of what's going on. The reader can fully understand what's happening, even if they are not in the retail industry, can understand what's what's going on. It's thoughtful. It's really calm presentation of what's going on. And I'm sure when this was happening, it was very stressful. Uh, but you don't share that. You don't put that on the paper. You really present the facts as they were, uh, the truth itself. And it's simple and concise language. You, This person then is anchoring the content on the purpose, the purpose being leadership, the purpose being um, this omni-channel. But by, uh, above all of that, it's about the impact that they were able to make in creating and unifying these two teams that were really um, separate and siloed in their own right. And as provided, of course, one example here, because the question is asking for one example, um, and is it was able to demonstrate the passion and the dedication that this person had by taking the time to really um, uh, uh, work through this process and, of course, get to the, the, the lesson learned as well. And then the last um, uh, essay for Kellogg is the value essay. And this one is asking values are what guide us in life and work, what values are important to you and, uh, and how have they influenced you? Here, what really matters is that you uh, identify a value that resonates with you. So values can be growth, community, um, compassion, inclusion, commitment. Um, you, it has to be a value. Um, it, it's not about what you care uh, about, but rather what is a value that you live by. And then you want to share uh, one example that illustrates that embodied value. How do you show up at work? How do you show up in the community uh, that you are a part of? How do you show up in, um, you know, in the, in the various spaces that you are a part of that embodying this value of who you are and how it has influenced you, of course. So let's look at an example. Um, and the example here is, uh, and I wanted just to kind of show you what the value is. Um, this one is, of course, a very, very personal piece. Um, so when my parents immigrated to Canada as refugees, they relied on their fellow Sri Lankan diasporic community to help them settle in and grow. Inspired by this, I value a growth mindset and creating opportunities for collective advancement. This applicant then goes on to talk about how this growth mindset and collective advancement, which means helping others grow as well, um, has been something that they have embodied in work and have embodied in the communities that they have been um, a part of. Uh, the idea here is the, again, it's anchored, brings the reader an understanding, how did this person get to have these values to begin with? 
um, and then a uh, calm and thoughtful presentation of those values. Uh, very simple language. There's nothing complex in here uh, written about it. And um, the person, of course, um, is going to, it, you may not see it here, but the person does actually to provide examples of how this has shown up in the work um, and the community that they have been a part of. So uh, this provides, uh, uh, you know, some context, some different ways that you can embody the three, uh, the 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 three three sets of um, uh, uh, writing effective essay. So the first one is you place the reader in a position to see the writer's point of view, whether they agree with it or not. It doesn't really matter. It's that you are really opening up and showing them who you are and what your lived experience has been. Second is you are presenting in a very calm and thoughtful way um, to really be able, for the reader to be able to see what you have experienced. You write in a very simple and concise, concise manner. Now, one thing I would say is don't try to do this all at once. Um, know that the process of writing is a process of editing and re-editing. So you will not get to this outcome in your first try. Uh, so bear that in mind. It, it, is, it, it is a process and there's no real avoiding it. And then of course, any essay that you're writing, you're anchoring it on a purpose or um, a value uh, that you, based on of course the, the prompt itself, and then you are providing at least one example. If you have space for more, then absolutely add more, but do not jeopardize quality of writing, detail of writing for more examples. It is better that there is one example that you really go dive deep into and providing enough um, evidence to show what experience, what your experiences look like and how they can be of value to the communities that you're gonna be a part of. And then throughout, uh, make sure that, you, that it's clear that you are passionate about that which you speak about. Care you care about your engagements. It's not something you're going to answer by saying, I care about X, but rather it's going to be woven into the writing, into how you present your how do you present your work. So with that, I am going to um, invite anyone who is interested in connecting with us to um, discuss your essays, discuss your applications. Um, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we want to get to know your story and see if this would be a good fit as far as a working together, given that um, we work with a select number of candidates each round. So I'm going to then open it for uh, questions. Um, I will be taking one moment to um, switch screens because uh, so I can actually uh, look at the camera while I'm looking at the question. And uh, in the meantime, please take a moment to answer your uh, to write your questions uh, so that we can answer as many as possible. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. So let's uh, go to some questions that we have. Oh, I see people from Japan. Amazing. Welcome. Um, okay, so I have a question from Fatima. Um, it says, how do we convince the admission committee to provide us with the scholarship? <laughs> I, I like this question. Um, uh, the you convince them by showing them that you are strong enough to deserve a scholarship. Uh, scholarship in most situations are uh, merit based, which means uh, that you have to demonstrate uh, strong academics in your undergraduate and or graduate uh, studies. Um, you also have to have strong GMAT uh, or GRE, depending on which test you are submitting. Um, and um, those are primarily the two, uh, two con convincing uh, pieces that, that, uh, that the admission team uh, uses to determine scholarship. If you have been offered an admission and are uh, not necessarily, uh, or have not received the scholarship first 
check with them to see if they have released scholarships. Uh, it also depends sometimes on the school as to when their scholarships are, when the scholarship amounts have been shared with the candidates. Some share it at the time of admissions, others share it later on. So take action immediately. And uh, then you want to build your case as to why you are deserving of a scholarship. So you are going to write an essay and um, share, uh, you know, what value do you bring and, and how your experiences and your background um, are strong to indicate that you are um, academically, you have strong ac academic aptitude to be able to succeed. Um, in the program and are, of course, deserving of that, uh, of those funds. Uh, sometimes, um, uh, especially if you're coming from a uh, low socioeconomic means, um, you can also look at what uh, uh, opportunities the school has from merit-based scholarships. Uh, so if you're coming from a developing country or you are, uh, I'm here speaking specifically about U.S. schools, um, if you're coming from a developing country and then, um, uh, or locally you are, you come from a low socioeconomic means background, uh, look for, uh, you know, be able to demonstrate uh, um, your financial status and, and and speak to that in, in an essay format as well. But do keep the line of communication with the school really open and really transparent because um, that's, uh, truth is always very strong. Of course, we all want scholarships. So it's, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, someone has to, uh, well, it's not always granted, but uh, if you keep open lines of communication, I think that uh, that's always a, a strong piece. Great, so we have another question. How best to present the value and strength we bring to the classroom? How should we approach such essays? Yeah, so first, um, from the value that uh, um, and strengths that you bring to the classroom, um, you have to, depends a little bit on the essay and the school that you're applying to, um, but uh, you want to look at what experiences you have had and showcase how that experience is going to be of value. So first and foremost, uh, let's say for example, you are very um, technically inclined or very analytical in nature. Well, then you wanna showcase how that analytic nature um, can be helpful in your, uh, to your classroom and showcase how you're going to be able to um, contribute to the classroom. Typically, uh, you want to present an example. So we always go back to examples, as I was speaking about earlier. Um, and uh, this um, examples are going to be a really important piece uh, of showcasing, right? Because if you show, you means you have to give an example that illustrates um, how you're going to be of value. And you have to look at past experiences to demonstrate the value that you bring. So it really depends on what your value is and what your strengths are. Um, you can have more quantitative value or you can have more qualitative value and both like neither one are wrong because we need both. Uh, but you look at really realistically what your value, what your strength is and try not to make up a strength that's not there because it's very evident and very easy to detect if it's true or not based on how you talk about an example. Okay. Um, with application volumes, oh, there's some questions. Okay. Um, with application volumes down at most schools this year, do you see a substantial increase in acceptance rates and more uh, race uh, space with scholarships uh, to offer test waivers to strong candidates? Um, applications. Um, Things may change uh, very, very quickly. I mean, I'm sure you saw today's uh, news with uh, Meta and the, uh, uh, you know, the the um, cut in in staff. So things uh, may change drastically and very quickly. Um, but uh, schools are, while we've seen application volume from last year. Um, being uh, lower in quantity, uh, it 
hasn't changed really the quality of the candidates that have been admitted to top ranked institutions. They're still looking for the same exact things as far as they've done in the past. Um, so that may mean, obviously, I think uh, acceptance rates are dependent on how many people apply versus how many were accepted. Uh, so those numbers are going to change, but I think the reality remains the same, that they still want very strong candidates to be um, admitted into the program. So the quality of candidate hasn't really changed. And um, the test waiver component, um, uh, uh, some schools offer test waivers, but really they haven't necessarily um, uh, uh, they, they haven't really provided a lot of, uh, uh, even if they do provide a test waiver, um, it's not always um, in the best interest of the candidate to really take, take that uh, up unless they have really strong um, background, quantitative background and can really demonstrate that they will be successful in the program. Uh, outside of that, it's not going to be very beneficial uh, to apply without a test. It's kind of like when we, um, when uh, COVID hit and schools were waiving the GMAT altogether or the GRE and everyone was applying, uh, but that didn't mean that the, you know, the, the ones that didn't have the, um, the, the strength of a candidate uh, as far as like what the school is looking for, which the test is able to give them some insight in, uh, they were not necessarily very successful in that front. Uh, there's a question here on the GMAT. I'm not sure I would be able to answer fully, but I would say you want to build a plan. Uh, so the question is how to start preparing for GMAT with full focused manner. Um, uh, focus is, is uh, being able to, it's a process essentially. Uh, one, having a plan of action, mapping out how much time you have and when you have to sit for your exam, giving yourself a buffer if you have to retake again, and then being consistent, uh, taking it as an appointment. Uh, if you if you set up uh, every single day, you're going to study for two hours. First of all, you want to break it down into one hour segments because focusing on two focusing for two hours is really hard. I think this is just across the board. We are human at the end of the day, um, and uh, then sticking to those appointment times and making sure that you are continuously progressing uh, and moving forward and. In, that um, is going to be one of the ways that you can uh, really be focused on the on the GMAT. Um, then it comes down to the quality, of course, um, uh, of the study as well, uh, which it's a whole nother topic. But uh, I'm sure GMAT, uh, the, the team at the GMAT can provide more commentary on uh, how to focus on the GMAT because they're more experts than I am on that front. Uh, So let's see. What are some key characteristics that uh, top admission schools look for in candidates? Excellent question. Uh, they're looking for potential for leadership. Um, oftentimes you see leadership as a, as a category of what they're looking for. Um, it's that sometimes really this way it's candidate and it's not true that you have to be a leader but you do have to ha demonstrate that you have the potential to be a leader. So what that means is that you have to demonstrate how you led a project, how you led a segment of a project, how you took ownership of it, how you worked with other people. This is more on the um, uh, collaboration piece. Um, so, so you don't necessarily need to have a leader title, but you do have to demonstrate that you have leadership potential. Um, collaboration is another really important piece in business school because all of your work is going to be collaborative and the schools want to know that you already are inclined to that kind of setting that you know how to, um, uh, to work in teams and work with other uh, individuals that have different styles of working and that you are able to um, uh, collaborate effectively. And um, then, of course, they want to know that you have um, the uh, potential to succeed in the program. So you have strong academics um, 
uh, and or um, a strong GMAT uh, to be able to transition. If you are applying to consulting jobs in particular, you want to have a really strong uh, GMAT score or um, you know test score essentially uh, because it has huge um, uh, implications on the outcome of your uh, of your in your success of your ability uh, in your success to secure a job. Sorry, and. Um, uh, the last thing is you want to have really strong goals. Goals are really important in business school. Um, oftentimes, candidates think that goals are, you know, something they can figure out while they're there. And the reality is the opposite. You can't really figure out a lot once you're there. Um, you can give yourself the flexibility to figure out, but you should have some sort of idea of where or, you know, idea of what you want to be doing. And um, because, you know, recruiting preparation starts before you even join the program. And um, it's just nonstop ongoing until you get that internship. And hopefully that internship is the right internship and you don't have to go through the recruiting process again the following year. Um, but the goals, in essence, are an important piece that shows the admission team that you are able to, uh, that you have clear goals you know where you're going you've done your due diligence and you know that these goals are realistic they can see they can see directly how your goals um, how your past experiences can connect or you have transferable skills to the goals and how the school can support you in that process uh, so all of those pieces are important in the admission process to look at the candidates um, success in admission uh, okay, so I have a question here. Most of the universities have an additional information, optional essay as well. Um, how important do you feel that particular section is and how should we approach the essay specifically? Yeah, so the optional essay, um, should it, it's truly an optional piece uh, for most, for the general optional essay. There are some schools that have optional short answer questions that are not really optional and I'm thinking here GSB. Um, so the optional essay that you are speaking about um, should be used only if there's something that you need to talk about. That can mean that you had a failed grade, failing grade um, in college or in grad school. Um, you had low GPA. You have low GMAT GRE score. You have um, gaps in employment. Uh, anything, uh, you know, your choice of recommender can be something you talk about in the optional essay. And, and choice of options, a choice of recommender only if it's um, an anomaly of the reason of the, the choice that you've made. Uh, the point uh, here is that you are going to address any sort of red potential red flags that the admission team may have. So you want to preemptively address that. If you don't address the red flags, for example, you have failing grades and don't talk about it at all, the admission team um, will uh, assume that you are okay with those grades and that you don't see them as an issue. But they see them as an issue. So from their perspective, this is not a good match, a good fit. So that's one of, one of the ways. Um, so it's important in as far as um, uh, what you include. Uh, you shouldn't use this optional essay to talk as another essay to just talk about something you've experienced. It's truly about covering any red flags that uh, are potential in your profile. As far as how you should approach the essay, um, it's truly simple um, language. You are going to describe the situation. Uh, you are going to get the reader uh, to or position the reader in a way that they can understand your experiences. And um, then you are going to be able, then you're going to talk about what did you learn from that experience. So let's say in college you were really, um, you know, interested in partying, not so much interested in, in academics. And you're going to talk about how that was perhaps the first time you left your, um, whatever the circumstances is, right? So I'm, I don't want to necessarily uh, include here details that we, one should approach it in one particular way, but you essentially give the fact, I was not, I was immature, in other words. Um, however, once I saw that my grades have plummeted, I took action and moved the grades, you know, my grades have increased over time. Uh, since then, I have been, you know, I've taken that experience to heart and have been very, um, 
sort of pragmatic in my approaches that I've had ever since, gaining five promotions or four promotions or two promotions, or whatever those numbers are. But the idea is that you look at the past experience that is not the ideal experience that you would want to have, and then talk about how did you learn from that experience and, and, and who you are today. Awesome. I think we are out of time. I always enjoy these sessions that I kind of forget how <laughs> how much time we have. Um, perfect. So let's see if there's any one last question, uh, if it's okay with the team at GMAT. Um, Uh, so, yeah, there's a question here that says, should we focus on only one strength and provide an example around it? Or should we touch upon a couple of different strengths? The word limit is 400. Um, the, uh, for 400 words, depend on how much you have to say, you may be able to, uh, well, first off, you, uh, no, so, so sorry. You have to identify one strength and provide one or two examples that identify that strength. The strength itself needs to be an anchor, a one thing. If you are providing more than one thing, it becomes confusing for the reader, and it's um, not. And it's also four hundred words is not enough to include two separate strengths and two separate examples to identify those strengths. Uh, so focus on one strength and provide one example, maximum two examples, but one, make sure that the first example you have given enough detail to be able to uh, really articulate how that strength itself you know shows up in the real world um do you foresee um i'm assuming increase of application for fall 2024 i actually um depending a little bit on sort of what the markets are and how um um the the sort of the employment and what the what the the job market looks like but uh, we do anticipate an increase in applications for fall 2024, which is application round for fall 2023. Uh, perfect. Okay. Uh, one last question. What's something you'd consider a competitive, uh, you'd consider a competitive GPA for top 10 for any programs on a scale of four, a competitive um, GPA, a competitive GPA. It's uh, probably uh, 3.5 plus on a 4.0 scale, um, uh, but uh, it's not just a GPA. So GPA is one data point. Um, it's depending on the rest of the application as well. Uh, Cause uh, they're like, I've helped people with a 2.5 get into Kellogg. So it's not the GPA itself. It's the whole application profile. Um, uh, so that's the reason why I'm saying that I don't want people to feel that, oh, it has to be one or it has to be like, if you if you don't have a 3.5, you will not be admitted um, because that's not true application. Uh, schools look at applicants from a really holistic, um, uh, holistic application. Wonderful. So um, thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for uh, being here. And uh, Chief Storyteller, there's a question here. What do you mean by Chief Storyteller? Um, it's just a play on words. Uh, it's uh, I am I am the person that I work that I work with work with clients and helping them tell their story. Well, that's essentially what that uh, Chief Storyteller means. Uh, thank you again for joining, uh, and thank you for wonderful questions. Uh, I look forward to connecting with you uh, live uh, through you know one on one sessions. Uh, if you would like to discuss your profile, whether you're applying this year or next. Uh, there is uh, a YouTube, uh, sorry, YouTube, uh, 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 a request form that you can um, that you can connect with us, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in our next session. I uh, will be having a session uh, tomorrow on goals, so head out, head to our uh, to seeadmissions.com. Uh, and uh, register for that event if you want to really talk about uh, how you can tackle the goal. So we'll dive, uh, dive deeper into that uh, piece itself. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And I will be uh, seeing you again soon. And, happy, and good luck with your, all your applications. <laughs>